Hey everyone, how are you? I'm excited to be kicking off this 2019 with a brand new show sponsor. Very excited to welcome Joseph Meyer Club to the show. If you haven't heard about Joseph Meyer Club, head on over to josephmeyerclub.com right now and check it out. This uh, They have a great product, uh, this aftershave that I've been using. And it's uh, it's really comes in a nice container, and it's got uh, this foaming tip on it, just a little bit in your hand, and it's really it's nice and clean. You know, if you ever used the uh, liquid ones before, you can kind of make a mess, but this is real clean and really easy to use, and smells awesome too. That's a really nice thing about it. Uh, so, let alone is it moisturizing and uh, and alcohol based, so it helps heal up your skin if you happen to. Uh, have any you know nicks and stuff but smells great too and uh right now to let you try it they're gonna let you uh get 20 percent off if right for all my uh rock paper podcast listeners so at checkout mention rpp jmc20 for 20 percent off uh again rpp jmc20 at josephmeyerclub.com and there's always free shipping so keep that in mind and uh yeah tell them shane sent you Hey everybody, Shane Presley here. Let me tell you about my friends at Naked Vine. Located at 1624 Clarkson Road in Chesterfield, Missouri. Serving up all your favorite wine, whiskey, tequila, and local craft beers. Stop by and visit them this week for some great live music. Thursday, January 17th, Nick Gussman. Friday, January 18th, Last Dance. It's a tribute to Tom Petty. And Saturday, January 19th, Less Gruff and the Billy Goat return to Naked Vine. So all this can be found at nakedvine.net. Be sure to follow them on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And I return to Naked Vine on February 12th with my next singer-songwriter storytelling showcase, bringing along my good friends Gabe Stroop of Skyburnt White, Ryan Chaney of Steeples and Fivefold, and Matt Hall of Inner Outlines. So don't miss that show, $5 at the door, 7 o'clock. Again, everything at nakedvine.net. Enjoy the show. Um, a podcast is kind of like a, it's like a radio show that's not on the radio. It's on, it's on the internet. Does that make sense? Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> that's also like my mom. Uh, it makes it sound more confusing, doesn't it? Uh, it sounds like this. Hello, this is Chris Helmick, uh, and I'm with Giant Steps of St. Louis, and you're re- listening to Rock Paper Podcasts. Have a good one. Behind the cloud
from that far All the echoes of love In the graves we've dug Have we forgotten who we really Love for you Everybody, Shane Presley here, Rock Paper Podcast, coming to you from St. Louis, Missouri, hanging out tonight with Chris Helmick. Welcome back to the show, my friend. How's it going? Good, man. I'm, uh, this has been it's been a little while, man. Almost yeah. uh, almost exactly two years since we last uh, yeah, I hung out on the show. I think it is almost exactly two years. Yeah, was, I'm pretty sure it was like in January last time. Yeah, something right <laughs> right around mid January, and we uh, we were talking uh, about. Uh, the giant steps uh rock the spectrum show then and we have another one this year and uh so it's exciting to talk about uh some of that again and um and what your work with uh with them and stuff so but uh yeah man so i'm I'm glad to be back here and uh catch up yeah thanks for coming yeah it was was good getting to kind of catch up with you before before we got on on the microphone yeah yeah uh so yeah welcome (laughs) (laughs) Well, we, uh, like I said, we do have uh, Rock the Spectrum happening on January 26th over at Off-Broadway. Uh, this is a uh, benefit for Giant Steps of St. Louis and features uh, that evening Owl Holiday and East Side Rhythm Band, Bottoms Up Blues Gang, and Cree Rider, and School of Rock uh, House Band. Yeah, and so, that's, yeah. yeah, that's... Uh the lineup we got this time around and uh, i'm pretty happy about it uh cree rider and bottoms up are going to be returning um again we had them at the last benefit and um i was able to talk uh to jordan over at school of rock uh, because i used to teach lessons over there and um we just kind of came up with the idea of having the kids get involved with a benefit like this uh, because we think it's for a really good cause and think that the kids uh, being involved in this kind of a show kind of shows them different sides of things that you can do with music and how you can kind of bring a lot of joy into people's lives so that'd be kind of a good lesson for them to 
learn as well as get an opportunity to play in front of a crowd that you know would be more uh, just diverse I, I feel like just with everybody that we might be seeing come through with uh, the different bands we have I think we picked out a pretty good spectrum of uh, music as well because we, we got a bit of the blues covered we got some rock covered we got some country covered um, you know and it might get a little bit funky too with Al Holiday oh, yeah. um, you know it gets those horns going sometimes so and uh, definitely when it gets those keyboards rolling you, you can get a party kind of going on so I thought it uh close out the night really well um as well so we became pretty good friends over the years um, and really this this whole show like uh, it's, it's a lot of my friends that are playing so it's, it's really nice for me to have a bunch of my friends involved in something that I've been working so closely with um, especially working at Giant Steps as a music therapist you know I see these kids five days a week um, and they've basically become like a huge part of my life I mean that's the majority of my time is spent at this school and uh, this event is 
pretty important to me because it it will help bring money into the school which you know we we're not a very big school we we only have about 20 students right now um, all of them are on the spectrum uh, with autism so uh, you know it can be it can be kind of trying sometime and we definitely need to have good staff that's going to be there we try to make it as one-on-one -on -one as possible with the students so um, raising funds and having funding throughout the year is really important for us and uh, a couple years ago I came up with the idea of having this benefit so uh, it was it was kind of a collaborative thing that I just kind of threw out in the wind and a bunch of people became involved very quickly um, and it was really successful last time so uh, the school really wanted to do it again and uh, so I got the motor rolling and started contacting people um, Steve over at Off-Broadway, he was really cool about letting us use the venue again. And uh, Once I got the venue and the date kind of set, then I started hitting up bands that I knew and had lots and lots of people contacting me about doing the show. Um, and I really wish I could add everybody that was contacting yeah. me to play. Uh, I mean, it would be awesome to have it be like a full day event and maybe sometime in the future, once we get this going a little bit more, I can maybe expand out the event um right now we're just we're you know we we don't have much of a budget that we have to work with to be able to create a big event and sometimes when you are doing a big event that's going to last that long there's a little bit more money that has to go in on the back end mm -hmm. to get things rolling um and so that's that's part of the reason that the event's still kind of a little bit more contained right now is uh, we're still trying to get sponsorship. We got a little bit of sponsorship this go around, um, but we're hoping next time we can get kind of more going so we can get a, a really big blowout uh, next go around. But I, I feel like this time we, we got really good musicians playing. It's gonna be a fun night. Um, everybody's playing back to back. It's gonna be from eight to midnight. Uh, uh, doors will open at seven, and yeah. So once eight o'clock rolls around, we'll have the first band up on stage, and it's just I, I'm figuring going to be a party because last time we we had the whole place packed out. And yeah, it was a really really good time. That's uh, I just recently kind of stepped into that world of uh, putting together a benefit show, and um, I did a uh, Toys for Tots mm -hmm. show this year right after Thanksgiving, and. Um, but yeah, like you're saying, like how many of your you know you called on some friends and they're all stepped up to the plate, and then and so many other people wanted to be a part of it too, and like that's exactly what I went through. Like, I, you know, it was so great to say call friends, and be like, hey, you guys, would you guys want to play this? And like, there's zero money; it's all for charity, and yeah, we went in, and like, and that's that's the best feeling ever, man. Like, dude, yeah, to call on those people and then they show up and and deliver when you need them and stuff. So yeah, yeah. And I I feel very fortunate being in this town and have you know been playing music in this town for uh, it's been like 13 years now and I mean I I've met so many people and so many different styles of musicians and have learned so much from so many different musicians um, so it's really awesome when you kind of just say hey I have this idea and it's for something good and you see a lot of really good people come out of the woodworks and yeah. like yes i want to get involved in this i want to be a part of this one two three four stumbling south broadway drinking my blues away South Broadway, they're drinking my blues away, wishing one of them trains would bring my baby back to me. Well, I left my baby last night, crying at the house. Yeah, I left him crying, crying at the house. I just can't be with him. You don't know what this music's all about. I want to hear some. Tommy Bankhead, some uh, Oliver Sane, some uh, Benny Smith, won't you do it again on South Broadway? I'm drinking my blues away. I wish I'm one of them trains. I bring my baby back to me.
Oh, oyster bar, yeah, sporting my new broken hearted scar. I just can't shake this feeling. I can't seem to shake it so far. So I open up my ears for what St. Louis brings. Takes living the blues. Figure out loud something. Now my heart just another ring. Some Johnny Johnson, some Oliver Sane, some Henry Townsend, won't you do it again on South Broadway? And drinking my blues away. I wish I'm one of them trains. I'll bring my baby back to me. I mean, the response for musicians was great. I hope our response for people coming to attend the show is going to be just as, as well, and that we'll see a lot of support so we can raise a lot of money. Because um, it, I mean, it is pretty important for us to, you know, have different kind of funding. Because um, we get some money through school districts and we get some money through grants, but it's not a whole lot um, in the scheme of things when it comes to you know, running a school and all the day-to-day -day process um, and all the equipment we might need and um, I mean it's it's not an uncommon thing for equipment to get broken at our school um, so a lot of students we work with they they just uh, they have a little bit of trouble re regulating at times and there can be uh, you know meltdowns or um, sometimes just problems like with dealing with an issue and uh, something might you know get broken in the process and we have to replace that kind of stuff so you know uh, it does create a certain kind of overhead and a cost that's there that is continually happening throughout the year as well as just um, you know having a student there and being able to fund like staff to be there with the student because um, me being a therapist there there's a bunch of different therapies I mean we have occupational therapy speech therapy we have academics, um, we do vocational skills, we have art therapy, um, we have a gym class and stuff. So we have a lot of classes, but also in the time that they're transitioning from classes or if there is like a down period and they might be working on some kind of vocational stuff, a lot of times we need TAs to be there and to um, be able to be with that student. We also need TAs in the classroom because uh, um, not just for safety issues, but also they can help facilitate and help work with students a little bit closer and better. Um, and that, I mean, that all that stuff requires money. Mm -hmm. um, it's not something that someone's going to do that for free at, day in, day out. Um, so uh, having a benefit like that, I, th I felt like for me with being a music therapist, it's just it seems natural to call on all my musician friends and say, hey, help let's help raise money for these kids um, and let's let's make their quality of life as good as it possibly can right now because they don't really have anywhere else to go um, uh, some of these students they they've tried to be in conventional schools or they've tried to be in special school district type settings um, and those environments just weren't right for them uh, they need a different kind of facility and our facility is a little bit more one-on-one -on -one. it's able to um, you know able to give more to that student like more attention to that student than some of the other places might be able to or we're trained in certain ways that we're able to deal with certain situations a little bit better if something does happen or if uh, there's just a regulation issue or um, even just in teaching different kind of skills having that like more of that one-on-one -on -one attention can make a big big difference than when you're um, trying to group uh, you know, five, six students, sometimes even more into a classroom of children that have autism and possibly other disabilities and stuff. So um, with us being a little bit more focused on just the autism spectrum, it makes us a little bit more specialized and we are able, I feel like, to handle it. But it, do, it does take money to do that. So um, this benefit really is about trying to just raise that, you know, raise money to have a better quality of life for the students while they're in our care. Yeah, man. You, you've been with uh, 
Giant Sup's a, a couple years now, right? Um, so I started with them back in 2015. So yeah, I'm. This is my fourth school year that I'm doing. Um, yeah. That I'm in the midst of. So uh, yeah, it's it's been pretty uh, educational. I I learned a lot about um, autism in general, but just a lot of different disabilities when I was doing schooling for music therapy, but actually working in the field and working with, you know, a human being and being in front of a person. Um, you don't see that disability really. You see their different characteristics and uh any any person with autism, their their person and you know, that they might have things that are they're dealing with that, you know, you might not necessarily deem normal, but it's pretty normal to them, so um, and some of it, uh, sometimes, you know, they, they they just can't help it. Like, it's just, it's part of their nature. Um, or it's just how their brain works. Uh, mm -hmm. So really just treating them as a person and getting to know a lot of these kids, like, really closely. And, and there's quite a few of the students that I've known the whole time that I've been there. Um, I've gained a really close relationship with them, and I've gotten a lot of insight. So there's some students that, you know, I might be a person that um, someone might come to if they're having a really rough time and they know that I can work really well with a student, um, they might come and say, hey, can you help out? And I will go over and try to help um, call them a student or just give them what they need at that moment. Um, but there's a lot of people that I work with that are like that too, that they just have these relationships with some of these students that um, their communication is so, so good that they're able to um, almost in like a, a sea of voices that are happening all at once that student is able to hone in on that one person and really focus on what they're saying and it it can make a big difference but i think that 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 came from just being around them so much and uh building that rapport working with them working on all these skills but also with me doing music stuff sometimes it's just having fun yeah. doing musical things um i kind of i get to I get to be the kind of the fun teacher, even though some of the other teachers don't like that I'm the fun teacher. Like I, I get to be the fun teacher just because I'm, I'm doing a lot of stuff with music, even though some of the students they don't realize that I'm, you know, teaching them different kind of skills by using music. I'm still able to use music, so it it is almost masked that hey, this is a fun activity. You don't really realize that I'm teaching you how to do motor skills right now and stuff sure. like that. So. That's yeah, it's it's really cool working there. Yeah, I had a uh, f friend on uh, a little while back, uh, Brian Higginbotham. Uh, was a big part of uh, this uh, fighting autism, and they do a lot of like MMA fights and different things and raise awareness. And but they threw they threw together a benefit this year also uh, called and uh, and that's what they one of the things like why they wanted to get into music because they know that music's a big uh, uh, has a big impact on a lot of the autistic uh, children and stuff. So, like, mm -hmm. um, it's in something they they respond well very well to. So, uh, so anyway, it made sense to throw a concert mm -hmm. and and stuff. So, like, they were they did a similar kind of thing and and um, and I think they did pretty well with it. But it's like it's just uh, it's really cool to see that uh, that that music that that sort of universal language that you know so how many people can react differently to the to the way music you know they respond to that to than maybe other things so yeah and that, I mean that's that's part of the reason like exactly what you're talking about part of the reason why I got into music therapy as much as I did because um, I was really just playing music for as long as I did and I was so aware of a lot of these things about how music um, affected people and I, I mean even playing shows you can feel it like you're in the room and it's almost like you feed off of like people's energy and a song that maybe you know is meant to be a slightly slower song winds up turning into a really fast and like loud song very quickly uh, depending on the crowd if like the crowd's are really pumped up it, it can get moving really fast because you feed off that um, and I think as, as a music therapist, like that is one thing that I had to kind of train myself was that there is a certain sense of separation you have to have from being able to use that as a tool um, and to, that it's not really about yourself, it's about who you're working with at mm -hmm. that time. 
Um, because it is very easy in music to have that communication almost because it is like a different language and it's almost a subconscious language that you're having with somebody. Um, and you, I mean, people even, you know, they, they have biases against people because of like their musical choices. Uh, it's so involved in our lives, like right now, especially in pop culture, like, I mean, yeah, most things that you see that are popularized are usually popularized by you know, artists that are musicians and um, music kind of drives the culture a lot of times too. Uh, even generationally, like when you look at decades, a lot of times decades are, you know, it's kind of set almost by what music was going on during that time period. For sure. um, so it's it's so ingrained in us, but I feel like it's it's something that's been ingrained in us for centuries that we don't even realize how ingrained it is. Um, even us listening to Western culture, like that that style of music, like uh, all our music is developed because of our Western stylized, you know, music that came out of classical music and stuff. But you go to all the other cultures like India and um, China, like and all kinds of places, they have almost a different style of music, and their culture is almost developed slightly differently because of uh, how they hear things. Um, and we, I mean, even the way we associate happy music and sad music, um, when we listen to a blues song and like a lot of times those songs are like minory, uh, we, we just have this association that has been ingrained in us since we were toddlers like that. When we hear minor chords in this kind of pattern, we, it's supposed to be sad and it's supposed to make us feel sad. Right. We hear these kind of chords in this pattern or something's upbeat, it makes us feel happy. So. Um, it's just something that we've we've kind of been trained in a certain way to to listen to music um, in these ways, and when you have that knowledge and you can kind of see how certain songs affect somebody, then it's really easy to use that um, information to do something that's going to make someone very involved and make them feel good. Even um, you can even, I mean, music has such a sense of. Uh, of heartache to it as well so you can even know there's certain things you might want to avoid or certain kind of songs that you might want to avoid if someone's dealing with something really hard or maybe you use those songs but you use them in a more therapeutic way and you really discuss like what's going on and what the depths of those emotions that that person's feeling what that connection kind of is um that is it's all encompassing and i think with with a lot of these kids with autism, like you were saying, um, it, it does very much connect to them because there's uh, autism, it's, I mean, it's a spectrum because there's so many differences, but also uh, there's a lot of, um, a lot of the disability and a lot of the things are because of certain parts of the brain that aren't quite functioning correctly. Um, stuff like your front, frontal lobe, like um, your auditory processing, like a, a motor functions like a lot of these things they they can you know things that are in our brain that help us regulate our emotions even those things aren't quite firing properly and they aren't quite working properly i mean one of the only things that does really usually work very well is the visual aspect um so pairing a lot of things with visuals is really good for these kids but um Music uses so many different parts of the brain as far as like rhythms and your motor senses, um, your auditory senses, uh, emotional regulation, regulation in general. Uh, if you use those properly and you're able to really kind of see what that person needs and you know how to use the music to, to you know, work with that person and uh, to provide them what they kind of need, you can, and you can take somebody that's you know, really amped up and just use the proper type of music and calm them down very easily. And all of us kind of do this kind of self-medication with music all the time. I oh, mean, yeah. that's, that's basically what why we listen to music a lot of times is because we want to feel like we need to be pumped up or we want to feel like we need to connect with this emotionally sad song or we need to feel like we just need to calm down and relax. Or maybe it's some kind of sense of nostalgia that we just need to take ourselves back into our childhood for a minute. Um, we use it all the time, and I think if you use it as a tool in some of the ways that I, I'm using it, 
um, it's really easy to make these connections, but also to make a very, very, very big dis difference in a lot of people's lives. Um, and it's part of the reason why I kind of started focusing more on the music therapy side of things is because I've been playing in bands for a long time, but I feel like there's so much more I can do with music now with how much knowledge I have about how much how music works, um, but just how people are in general too. Mm -hmm. um, and working with a lot of the students that I do, but also I was working with Alzheimer's patients, so I saw a lot of that, that kind of stuff too, but just working and performance with like being on stage and networking and crowds and stuff you get to know a lot of different people and you see a lot of people in your life and I've learned a lot from people but I, I feel like I need to kind of use that music a little bit differently now um, so I've been a little bit more focused on trying to do something more with it and focusing more on that therapeutic side of the music taking my my degree and trying to put it to use yeah I uh I feel the same way, man. I've been doing this show for a long time, and I uh, and I feel like you know one day it just kind of clicked like that I can do a lot more with this than just like it's always been fun, and I enjoy mm. the conversations and things. But it made me realize one day like I can do a lot more with this. Like this show can reach a lot of people. It can make a big impact on a lot of people, and uh, you know just like uh, in documenting all these stories and different things and. Um, it's just you know it's kind of crazy to think about the the sort of impact that just this conversation or just any of these shows could have uh, on people and stuff so like it's kind of crazy to think about that how much we can make a difference and mm -hmm. with something like you know whether it's music or even a podcast or whatever so just yeah. doing this stuff uh it's, it's kind of really it's kind of crazy to think about how much of an impact it can make so yeah, so I, mean, I know you, you've you definitely made an impact on, on your podcast. Uh, I mean, I remember when you were first just kind of starting it out, and it, it, I thought it was a great idea, and I saw you just, you know, it was it was kind of a little bit more spaced out every show, um, and you were kind of getting your role, and then all of a sudden it's just people really got into it, and, it was, and then I just saw you were getting people on the show, like, constantly, and oh, yeah. now I feel like it's... When you release it it's it's like batches now <laughs> yeah i've been uh man, yeah we did like one a week for the beginning when i was just when it was me and chris doing the show together and then after he left uh we i mean i've been doing like three or four a week for like three years now so yeah. like it's and then uh, occasionally I've hit like five, and then but sometimes I've also done like two or something. Yeah. So either way, it's still a lot of content uh, being out there. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think you have a great that. I, I love being on the show. This is oh, yeah, one of my third, third, yeah, fourth times on it. Did Toe Fire one in the in the boat bar, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, we did that one. Uh, and then we did uh, that two years ago. Was uh, yeah, the other one for about the benefit two years ago. Mm -hmm. I was I was kind of in the background of one of them for recording while right. you were you were doing another one yeah um, so yeah yeah i always enjoy being on the show it's yeah man it's good catching up with you too it's, it seems like uh since i've been focusing a lot more on this music therapy stuff and doing these things i don't get out as much at, at night and that's i think for a while there i was seeing you all the time because you you like to frequent shows a lot and um i know you know a lot of musicians around town so it was really easy to run into you at shows yeah. I, I've definitely been not going to as many, so I know I haven't seen you in a while. I think partly because of that, so it is good to get to catch up sure. with you. Yeah, I uh, um, yeah, I often make a joke that uh, I was like, well, you know where to find me because I'm I'm usually out Broadway Oyster Bar or yeah. something. If I'm not working there, I'm usually hanging out there anyway and <laughs> yeah. for the shows and so. But uh, but yeah, man. Well, you are. Uh, you, like you're saying, you, you, you said you've been working uh, a lot to, for the school and doing all this stuff, working more for your therapy, uh, but uh, you still are working to, as uh, for original music. Uh, you yes. still yeah. you're, you're always writing and recording and doing stuff here at the house. Uh, I've been yeah. you, you uh, you're working on a new tune uh, yeah. that you want to share on the show today. Yeah, I was. Uh, so I have been working on. I've been working on a few tunes uh, now. I've been. I. I I've gone back and forth for a long time with doing just uh, recording in studios, having other people do stuff for me. Um, 
every time like it kind of it was either with bands or different musicians and stuff kind of either would fall through or I wasn't quite happy with where things were going um, so I decided to do a lot more stuff on my own now um, just to in some ways it's more compositional like I really want to focus a little bit more on the compositions of my songs um, I've been you know playing in a bunch of different bands and writing stuff but I feel like it it got so kind of generalized to the acoustic guitar and most of the songs were kind of wrapped around the acoustic guitar and uh, you know, I, I love playing electric guitar and I, I like playing bass sometimes. I love writing bass lines. Um, I like playing on keyboards too and messing around with all kinds of sounds. And, um, you know, I like programming drums. Like, I, I mean, I love all the technology side of, uh, of music as well. And I'm uh, pretty well versed in it at this point. Um, so been, you know, writing and composing in that kind of uh, world where I'm doing it a little bit more on the digital side or I'll come up with like a little guitar part and I'll record it and then I'll see how that develops. Um, sometimes it will develop with lyrics, um, sometimes not. Uh, I also bought myself a nice old ty typewriter so that uh, I can um, sometimes just sit down and break away from the technology and kind of write in a little bit more old style way of doing stuff uh, and just really trying to get the creative juices flowing. So. Um, I do have a song that I do want to share. It's called Atom Bomb. It's a song that uh, I played in a couple of my bands. Um, and I feel like it, it's progressed, but sometimes the song would kind of more turn out to be whatever band I was playing in because um, everybody kind of put their own style or influence on it. Um, and I never really had my full vision of what like the song was because the song really came from a dream that I had. Um, about watching an atomic explosion um, and I was talking to someone about it and they were like you really should write a song about that and I was like okay and I went home and wrote a song about it uh, and started to kind of develop it but like I said it turned into a lot of different like songs almost so uh, I was gonna share
city's been laid to waste, left desolate and been erased. Fragments cast on the ground, people lost, never to be found. It's not completely done, and uh, hopefully it will be like on a, a compilation and stuff. I'm not sure at this point if I'm gonna just do a thing where I'm steadily releasing singles, or if I'm gonna try to um, just combine it all into an album. I think most of what I'm seeing with music nowadays, um, it's not something I think I want to turn into a CD necessarily. I think I might keep it a little bit more in the digital realm mm -hmm. um, and try to just start producing stuff and constantly putting things out there. Yeah, uh, I think that's the way to go, man. Yeah, so this one, yeah, it's called Atom Bomb. It's, like I said, not not completely finished. There's there's a couple little mixing things that I still got to do. I might uh, be re-recording some vocals on it and stuff, and I might actually uh, be trying to add... Um, I had a couple of friends on there that uh, I have one of my friends he recorded some guitar parts I haven't gotten that mixed into it yet uh, so this will be kind of a sneak peek and I thought it'd be fun to premiere it on your show yeah man so uh, yeah we'll, we'll definitely take a listen to that very cool yeah I'm I'm, uh, I'm glad that you're uh, you're still working on this all this stuff I and mean, like I said like to, to keep writing and recording more music hopefully we'll get a uh, a lot more music coming out soon and yeah yeah i mean i've been I, i'm not stopping with it i think it's just kind of shifting uh i love writing but i've also i mean i've been learning how to animate because one of the things i want to do with music therapy is uh i want to some of the songs that i work on with some of the students um i'd like to make them into little animated short videos uh because like i said some a lot of the students i work with their things about visuals are there so pairing it with, you know, a fun animated visual yeah. with the song that, you know, I've been working with them on, um, I think would be a good thing. So, yeah, uh, absolutely. so, you know, I'm writing a lot of, you know, what, what would be considered children's songs or very simplistic songs for a lot of my therapy stuff, but I'm also still writing songs that have a deep personal meaning for myself as well. <laughs> I was, uh, talking about it not too long ago, but like how, like, uh, those uh i think it kind of started as a goof but like a lot of the guys are kind of doing it to, uh there's there's been a lot of these like bands recording like uh nursery rhyme type of uh t songs and stuff like uh mm -hmm. um i was t joking about it how, how like uh i think jim brewer kind of put the idea out there but like you know all these guys have band uh, all these guys have children now and stuff but like and but his he started it as a uh he was doing impressions like you know ACDC doing like the Hokey Pokey mm -hmm. and uh, Metallica doing bingo and stuff and then like and then like a lot of that like really happened like a lot of these bands that like have been recording children's versions of songs mm -hmm. and stuff like that but so because their kids can't listen to a lot of their music yeah so they've yeah. been recording music that they can listen to yeah yeah I think uh, I think that uh, generationally like a lot of things that it, I deem as popular kind of like on the mainstream there like a lot of these musicians they they're you know they have families now that are you know growing up and they're probably like kind of taking a step back and going oh i probably need to shake a little bit of that persona so yeah. doing something like that i think is pretty good for them yeah i just joked with uh old uh old capital square dance club too they were talking about that song baby shark um mm -hmm. oh yeah and i just, uh, man that song just like completely went wild and it's it's crazy to me because i've known that song for a few years now with working with like younger students and then all of a sudden it was like everywhere really yeah. like crazy and then there was so many different versions of it well jesse's got a, a baby at home and so he was like that's all he's been listening to <laughs> and he's like you guys ever heard this song and then, so we were joking about them covering it or something like that and, but yeah. it's just you know like i was saying there's a th there's market for all that stuff i mean there even if, even if it's uh 
so, you know, you write that song or whatever. I mean, it, it could blow up and be the next big hit and yeah. stuff. So, yeah, I mean, it's sometimes a sometimes a perspective, you know, kind of changes. But I think when you're, especially when you're uh, around, you know, a scene like St. Louis where there's just so many good musicians, and you feel like you almost have to always be on your toes and like. Um, you have to be bringing your A game a lot of times uh, because you know it's it's it never feels like a competition, but there's also this sense of like I want to be the absolute best that I can be because right. there's so many people that are out there doing so many good things, and um, you know I, I feel like for a musician in St. Louis, it, your perspective sometimes can get a little bit skewed because it's almost like you're trying to play for all the other musicians in St. Louis, and you forget that. There are tons of people that are not musicians in St. Louis, and uh, there's a lot of kids that are, you know are just learning stuff, and they're they're growing up with music. And in a certain sense, if they you know catch you at like a big event where it's like you know Earth Day or something like that, that's, a, that's one of their first exposures to music that they're gonna ever have is seeing your band play. And um, it's you know sometimes having a little bit of that perspective that. You, you can play a good quality song and it, does, it, it it can be for a certain you know market like that like children or something like that and you can still make a good song yeah <laughs> yeah man you uh well again uh, we got the the benefit coming up yeah. uh, January 26 tickets are available today at offbroadwaystl.com it's uh, twenty dollar tickets yeah and again that's a uh, that's a donation right to uh, uh, giant Steps of St. Yeah. Louis, so... Yeah, we'll go towards a great cause. Yep. And then, uh, again, it features uh, the talents of Al Holiday and the East Side Rhythm Band, Bottoms Up Blues Gang, Cree Rider, and uh, you said Cree's, Cree's uh, bringing along a band, so... Uh, yeah, he's bringing along a band. He's not quite bringing the whole family band, but... Yeah. Uh, yeah, he said, he said he'll have a pretty good band, uh... We didn't really get into details, but in some ways, I, I'd like to be surprised because I'm always I always enjoy seeing who Cree brings with him. Sure. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. I mean, he's got a a long list of uh, talented friends too. So yeah, I mean, he uh, does. It's always he fun does. to see who shows up. Yeah. Uh, and then again, uh, School of Rock uh, House Band will be uh, yeah. there too. So it's going to be a fun evening, all for a good cause. Uh, yeah. And off Broadway is one of my favorite rooms in the city. It's always yeah. a, always a good time over there. Good sound. We'll have a raffle going too. So we got some uh, got some artwork that I know we'll have for sure. Um, but we're we're getting a few other donation items. And if you hear this show before the benefit, and you, you feel like you want to donate something for the raffle, if you got any good items, you can always contact me um, through Giant Steps. Uh, just uh, see Helmick at giantstepsstl.org. Um, you can get a hold of me if you have any questions about the benefit as well. Mm-hmm. And that's the website, uh, Giant Steps? Giantstepsstl.org is the website, and then it's just my first initial and my last name for uh, my, my email. Right. But the, if you want to get more information about school, yeah, uh, right. head on over there. And... Yeah, you can definitely. Uh, we have... Our website, which will tell you about the program, it tells you about how you can even donate. So if you can't even make the show, you can donate money to the school uh, through the website. Um, we also have a summer school program that we do, which uh, the summer school program is not just for students with autism. Um, it's any any student that has a disability. Um, so there's a lot of schools that offer summer camp programs, but uh, we. We have a pretty good pricing compared to other schools, so we have a lot of different um, students. Like usually, we get about eighty to ninety students for our summer camp program. Um, so the signups for that will actually be coming up soon too. So if you know anybody that has a um, you know niece, a nephew, a little brother, a little sister, somebody in the family, or a close friend that uh, needs something to do this summer, they can look at the Giant Step summer camp program. Very cool, man. Yeah, so there's lots of good information you can get about the program for sure on, on our website. Yeah, and we got to, there's also Giant Steps on uh, Facebook as well. So we, yeah, uh, Facebook. I just uh, I just got us on Instagram and uh, okay. Twitter as well. So 
Um, we'll be posting pictures pretty regularly on Instagram and, uh, you know, trying to do some alerts that way. There's also, if you go to Facebook, you can also donate through Facebook as well. We got our donation stuff on yeah. there as well. So And click RSVP for the event and all yeah. that. So. Yeah. yeah, we'd love to know kind of a we can get an idea on how many people to expect that's always good at the beginning but sometimes sure. it's it's great to just walk in and not know what's going to happen and then you get pleasantly surprised oh yeah so i, I I'm, I'm just hoping a lot of people make it out because it, it is going to be for a really good cause definitely yeah man so so yeah grab some tickets come out and party with us and uh raise a bunch of money for giant steps of st louis and uh, all the children so but uh, Chris, this, this has been great, man. I really yeah. appreciate you doing this again. Uh, yeah, thank you. It's always fun getting to hang and catch up. And uh, yeah, it, it definitely is. And I appreciate you coming over and letting me talk about this again. Absolutely, it's, man. It's really important. To ha- me. Happy to help. Awesome. All right, thanks, Chris. Yeah, thank Bye, you. Bye, everybody. Bye. Rock paper podcast. Rock paper podcast. Rock paper podcast. Rock paper podcast. Well, yeah, that was it.